That wasn't the reveal of this movie. He even he even said, I think you knew the whole time. And I felt like he was looking at us going, I think you knew the whole time. What's up you guys, welcome to Boss Level 8 where we make fun of movie critics. We watched the new Peter Jackson movie, Mortal Engines, and uh, I have a feeling a lot of people are gonna hate this movie, you know. Because it's fun or something. One person in particular is Chris Nashawadi. We're going to take a look at his review of the film. We've never seen this before, so you're reading it with us for the first time as well. If it is your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell right next to it so you can get notified every single time we have a new video. Also, if you want to see us filming this live before it actually comes out, we do that every single week on Twitch. We film our shows live for you to hang out with us and chat with us about, and then you get to see the edited version later on. So feel free to check that out. Now let's make fun of this stupid ass review. For the first half hour or so, the Peter Jackson produced steampunk adventure, Mortal Engines. It's not steampunk that literally takes place in the Victorian era. That's the whole point of steampunk, Victorian era with modern stuff. This is really far in the future. So you're wrong, you're like ridiculously wrong. It's like you yeah. showed up to a basketball game in fucking hockey pads. Is a beautifully freaky popcorn bliss. It's like a young adult Mad Max as directed by Terry Gilliam during his Wiggy Time Bandits Brazil phase. It's gonna be interesting how you make that a bad thing. Because on paper that sounds like what a lot of people would want. A lot of people. That dazzling initial blast of action has the propulsive world-building creativity we've come to expect from the mad maestro of Middle Earth. Even if it's Jackson's longtime protege, Christian Rivers, who's technically the film's director. But then, once you begin to acclimate to the film's eye candy junkyard wonders, it slowly starts to dawn on you that there's still another hour and a half to go, and that it's going to be a long ride indeed. Can we talk about the maestro of Middle Earth? That's an amazing title. It, it, it is. <laughs> also, it's a, I mean, fantastic alliteration. If, yeah. if anything, so far, that's a beautifully written paragraph. Um, <laughs> Right. It is. I mean, that's some writing right there. What's wrong with it, Jeff? What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it is who wants a 15 minute movie? You watch the first 15 minutes of the movie and you're like, there's more? Fuck! He's like, normally I pay a dollar a minute for my movies. And this movie costs $18. So I want 15 minutes of action, wrap that sucker up, and three minutes of credits. It's virtually a beat for beat remake of George Lucas's original Star Wars. From its naive, it is? I think I can figure out how he's gonna do this. Bad guys making big bad weapon try to take down things so they have to go and destroy thing, right? Okay. That's also Star Wars. Weird part is, <laughs> that's also fucking everything. <laughs> From its naive wannabe flyboy hero Tom, Robert Sheehan, to its tough heroine with mysterious parentage, Hester, Hera Hilmar, to its sarcastic, swaggering mercenary with a bounty on her head, Anna Fang, South Korean born musician, that's unnecessary. Thanks. Everybody else gets their name and she gets like her whole fucking lineage <laughs> and profession that isn't normally acting. It's just like, Everybody else is like, yeah, uh, Tom played by Jim, Helen played by Karen, and Jennifer was played by, and it's fucking Wikipedia. <laughs> the movie uneasily anchors its shock of the new look with shrug of the old storyline. Even the film's villain, Hugo Weaving's charismatically duplicitous Thaddeus Valentine, turns out to be a bad father who's building a top secret world destroying weapon. I don't know, it's just not the first time that like some evil madman made a big weapon. It's not the first time that like the person who was bad was someone's daddy. That's not really the case. Most of the stuff that they showed in flashbacks, you were like, yeah, that's pretty much his dad. Star Wars was like, I'm your father. And you're like, what? That wasn't the reveal of this movie. He even, he even said, I think you knew the whole time. And I felt like he was looking at us going, I think you knew the whole time. <laughs> because we did. Yeah, surprise. It wasn't the same thing. The only thing missing is a Wookiee and a pair of bickering droids. Yep, just add those two. Fucking Star Wars. <laughs> Identical. That's all it takes. They even had the, the Tusken Raiders were already in there for sure. Pretty sure I saw a couple ad ads. At least it cribs from top shelf source material. Which is really funny because like a lot of people didn't like Star Wars when it came out. So who knows what'll happen in like 30 years when people are talking about this movie. Someone makes another movie and they're gonna be like, Oh, it's just a straight up copy of Mortal Engines. 
Yeah. Just add a moving city and use the exact same thing. Mortal Engines looks like it cost a billion bucks. If only as much originality had gone into its Beats by Joseph Campbell narrative as its Baron Munchausen for teens set design. Man, you are just all the references. How can it be Baron Munchausen set design if it's exactly like Star Wars? It's the exact same thing as this thing. Now let me give you 1700 other references that it's also kind of like, which means it wasn't exactly like that. The actors, apart from the always dependable weaving, he is. I completely agree. He yeah. helped me move a couch in the rain. Guy's awesome. I was like, thanks, Mr. Weaving. He was like, you're welcome, Mr. Clampers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't add much screen presence to their hand-me-down roles. It's also an oppressively busy film with a Drums of War score that won't be happy until it cudgels you into submission. Yes, I was actually like bleeding on the ground from the music. People behind me were like, stop, stop, too much symphonic. 40 years after Lucas first whisked us to his galaxy far, far away, there's no denying that we live in a cinematic universe that's been largely mapped out by Star Wars. I completely agree. It was highly influential. But in Mortal Engines, that debt is too literal. We've all seen enough tales about scrappy young rebels sticking it to the big bad empire and finding their inner hero along the way. Yeah, like Flash Gordon, which oddly enough is why that motherfucker made Star Wars. <laughs> so this has been happening for a while. It's not them. It's not that one movie. It's like complaining that like someone made a horror film with people die. <laughs> uh, with a knife? Come on. In a kitchen knife? Ugh. Maybe that's why, despite all the film's retro future eye candy, it never quite sweeps you out of your seat and transports you someplace new. Because movies aren't magical. And if it did that, I'd be scared. <laughs> like, why is it doing this? I don't know. I, I can understand if a movie doesn't take you to another place. Like, if, you, if the imagination doesn't hit you, it doesn't mean that it doesn't hit. Just means it didn't hit you, that's fine. Some people watch The Wizard of Oz and they're like, this this does nothing for me. And then they watch, you know, Drop Dead Fred and they're like, oh my God, I learned so much and it just took me to a place. It's a squeaky salvage job that could have used a fresh dose of oil to make it hum. It sounded like it could have used a Wookiee and a couple droids as well. <laughs> you know what, it's funny because the, the, the main thing that upsets me about this review is it didn't review. It didn't tell anything about the movie. Like it would have been nice if at any point like you kind of gave an idea of like the plot or where you, things, you thought things went wrong instead of just being like, I'm really tired of movies like being influenced by other movies. I mean, that's really all this was. <laughs> It was literally just that. It's like it's like saying Oasis sucks because they kind of sound like the Beatles, but I'm sorry, they wrote Champagne Supernova, so fuck you. That being said, what did you guys think of this guy's review of Mortal Engines, and have you seen the movie? Are you planning on seeing the movie? What's your deal, people? Put it down in the comments. Also, if it's your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell right next to it. You can click one of the videos on the screen to see one of ours that you haven't seen before, or maybe you haven't, just want to watch it a second time. Who freaking knows? Otherwise, Till we see you next time, geek out and game on.